Hey guys, welcome back to Start Manga, where I teach you everything you need to know about how to draw like a manga artist. I'm your host Spencer, and today we're going to be learning how to draw heads. Heads are the most challenging but most essential structure you'll ever learn as an artist, and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you everything you'll ever need to know about how to draw them. We'll go through the anatomy, proportions, drawing process, various angles, and some little tips and tricks along the way that'll really really be helpful. If you're new to this channel and you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that red button so you catch all the newest tutorials and videos. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Although I highly recommend learning about the skull first, if you want to get straight into drawing heads, skip to this timestamp. If you want to learn to draw the head in detail, it's essential that you understand the construction of the skull. I can say with confidence that the head gets about a thousand times easier to draw once you've studied the skull. For example, here's a drawing that I made of a full head. It's got a full face and everything. And the problem with this head is very, very obvious if you've seen drawings of heads before, or if you've even just looked at a person, obviously. The nose is too low, right here. Right? This nose bridge and the bottom of the nose look way too low on the face. It just looks wrong. Now, it can be hard, if you've never drawn faces a lot, to see what the actual issue is. Is the face too small? Is the nose too big? Is the nose in the wrong place? So let's quickly go over how we would fix that. Now, step one, for me, is always to draw the skull. Now, this is very detailed. You don't need to draw a skull like this, and you'll see the skull come back later as well. What we see as a problem here is that the nose bridge is too low on the face. Once we learn about proportions, this is going to be a little bit simpler. But generally, the bridge of the nose goes about here. It should be closer to the bottom of the skull's eye sockets to halfway or so, which is about here. So we can see that the nose bridge should be much, much higher than it is on this drawing. And that's why the nose looks like it's super low. Right? If we draw the skull and the skull looks wrong, or something is wrong about the anatomy, which is a lot easier to tell the difference from, we know that we can fix it by just fixing the skull. So what we want to do is correct. And all we need to do to correct for this skull is raise the nose bone up a little bit, this nasal bone. You can see here that the bridge of the nose is much more coincident with the bottom of the eye socket towards the middle of the eye socket, and that's going to be correct if we're drawing a person's nose. And if we redraw the face, as we did from before, the nose here is way too low. If we draw it with the bridge in the correct spot, which is around there, we can see it looks much more natural. Let's go over some basic structure. The skull is a very confusing object to try and replicate. In order to avoid the confusion of so many weird pieces being put together, I like to break it down into seven basic parts. First, we have the calvarium. The calvarium is just that big spherical part that you see on the skull. If I were to draw it from the side here, the general shape of the head. The calvarium is just what I like to consider this big circle. I also call it the cranium once in a while. So if you hear cranium, that's what I'm talking about. Next, we have the frontal. The frontal is this big red part, and it's just generally the forehead. Think of it as the forehead. We have the orbit or the orbitals. Those are the eye sockets. We have the nasal, which is the nasal bone. And this is where the nose bridge comes from, from that last example. We have the zygomatic, which is the cheekbones. We have the maxilla, which is this upper part of the mouth, and it goes all the way down to these top teeth, but it does not attach to the bottom teeth. That is the mandible. The mandible is the jawbone. What's important to note about the features of the skull is they divide into two major parts. These six are all connected to this upper part of the skull, which I believe anatomically is what we call the calvarium, but I'm not 100% sure. And then this bottom part, just the mandible, is pretty much the entire jaw. From the front, the skull is very flat, with the eye sockets, cheekbones, jaw, and nasal bone being the most apparent that you can see, as well as the top of the head. The back of the skull is visible from the front. As you can see, the forehead would tend to sit around here at this line, and then on the other side it would sit here. So we can see that the back of the skull is visible. Now, if the character has hair, this doesn't matter too much, other than the fact that you're going to push the hair out a bit. Next, we're going to look at the three quarters view. There are a few prominent features on the three quarters view. We have the orbitals. Obviously, the eye sockets are going to be important from any front view. The nasal bone becomes a lot more pronounced, as you can see here. Right? We would see the nose push out from that angle, just so you guys get an idea of what the nose would look like from here. Let's get rid of that. We also have the cheekbone. And usually, usually the cheekbone has shadow underneath it here. The zygomatic would have shadow underneath it there. As you draw skin over top of it, it still pushes out because it's a very prominent bone on the face. And the jaw has twisted a little bit. So if this was our frontal view, the jaw is now here. Right? We don't see it from this, this shape. 
this front shape, we would get more of a chin down here, longer jaw, and then attaching up to where the ear would start. Taking a look at the skull from the profile view, what we're gonna see is that the chin pushes out a little bit further than everything else. That was a bit of a bad line, let me try that again. We're gonna get a little more of an angle instead of going straight down, right? When we're drawing very realistic characters, this is the type of thing we want to see, where we have this anatomy showing through, how the angles of the face line up with each other, right? But when we're drawing characters like an anime, for example, we don't want to see true realism all the time, right? For example, if I'm drawing a character like this, and I draw a forehead, a little brow ridge draw in the nose, Sometimes when I'm drawing in the nose, I'm not actually going to have the chin be out here, as you would see on the skull. My nose might go straight down into the chin. Draw this little shape in here, and this is my head, right? If I draw in a head like this, the thing that we're going to see is that the chin is actually further back. Now this depends on your art style and how you draw, but generally, you can move the chin back and forth as much as you want. It doesn't matter too much work with what feels right to you. Looking at the skull from this three quarters back view, we see that much of the face is not visible anymore. And this is important when you're drawing characters because if you're drawing them realistically, you don't wanna show anything from the face other than maybe a bit of the nose, the mouth possibly if it's wide enough, and then the jaw. You would also see the ear and the back of the head and things like that, but the face would not be as visible. You definitely would not see the eyes from this angle. But, if you're drawing a character in an anime style, again, sometimes we take some creative leeway. We wanna draw a character like this, right? Say this is where their jaw goes, and then we have the neck right there. Sometimes you're gonna get artists that show off the eye from this angle, and they're gonna draw it like this. So you'll see it, the character's looking forward. Realistically, you would not see this eye at all. You're not gonna be able to see this eye in realism, especially from how, depending on how far back we've turned. But sometimes we need a little bit of creative leeway in order to show emotion, and this is a good way of doing that. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the back view here. So we can see that we have a very good view of the calvarium here. Normally, if we had this facial features on top or the features of the head on top, you'd be able to see some ears, but that's not important right now. And then we move on to the jaw down here. And the jaw is fairly visible in this case, but once we draw in a neck, you're not gonna be able to see much of the jaw. Just keep that in mind. Now that we understand the skull, the head is a piece of cake in comparison. We start by dividing the full structure into four major parts. The calvarium, the jaw, the neck, and the mask. Starting with the calvarium, we're just going to draw this spherical shape. I've blurred out or erased out a bit of this part because we're going to be drawing the face at a three-quarters view, and you'll see how that looks. Next we draw in some guidelines. This is not one of the four major parts, but this helps us dissect where we're going to put these parts. The mask is just the hairline mixed with the front or side of the face. This does not include the jaw. The jaw is another part, and you'll see that in a second. Here, when we add in the jaw, we're including the chin and the jawbone, right? We're, we're basically redrawing the mandible. And here I've drawn in a little bit of neck, but I'm gonna add that in as its own part. So here's the neck. And then as an extra part, this would not be part of the head itself, but it is important, the ear. We're gonna take a look at some basic proportions of the head. Now, I've drawn a full head with the face. We're not gonna focus on the face, we're just gonna focus on the head proportions today. So initially, when we draw the head, we're gonna start with a circle here, right? And when we draw that circle, we like to draw in guidelines, some simple guidelines. One goes about halfway down this circle, the other one goes straight through the middle of that circle. On top of that, we wanna figure out how we can lay out certain facial pieces. Now, that's where we use our proportions. On this head that I've drawn here, I have the head divided into three main parts. You can't see them, but they're there. This is the hairline, and then we have the brow line, the bottom of the nose or so, and then the bottom of the chin. And we can see that these parts, if I create a little line for each of them that goes about straight out, right here, and then right there. These aren't perfect, but you can see they should take up generally the same amount of space. This one is proportionately smaller, but that's okay. Only on a perfect face are we gonna see perfectly proportional thirds. Now these thirds are what helps us draw in the face. So over here, what I wanna do is start by figuring out the brow line. And that's really, really easy because we just use this middle line. When we wanna find the bottom of the nose, I like to draw about where the circle ends, but we can also do it a little bit shorter. 
In this case, we would have it a little bit shorter if we want to match the look of this face. And then matching this size, let me redraw that, matching this size, <laughs> one more time. <laughs> there we go. We're going to create one more. It's about the same length. And this will be where our chin goes. And then we do that again. We draw in another line here. That's our forehead. When we draw in the head now, if we're doing it from a front view, we want to draw in some side planes. The head is not a sphere. It does not have perfectly round features. It has side planes. When we draw the face from this angle, you'll see once it uh, is fully filled in, it'll look more obvious what I'm drawing. We have a front view here from the th one third perspective. Let me draw in that guideline just one more time. From the third perspective, right? So this is a three quarter view. That's what I'm saying. When we have our proportions in like this, although very, very rough, you can see what this head looks like. With the proportions in, we would have brow line here, nose here, chin here, hairline here. The head has a side plane. Now this is not perfectly accurate for what the side plane looks like, but you can see, we can line it up to be about box shaped, right? If I make the top of the head flat, and make the front of the face flat, we're gonna have a box shaped head. Now, we can draw in the side planes by just moving in the edges of our circle a little bit. This is not gonna be perfectly accurate and I'm probably gonna edit things later, but generally this is what we wanna see. Now, what we can do is sort of draw in some basic eye features, right? So our skull would have the eye sockets around here. This is not perfect, this is just for generalization. And now we wanna draw in the jaw. How do we draw in the jaw? Well, the jaw, I believe I said it earlier, lines up with this peak of the mouth. And what that helps with when we're drawing in a curve for the jaw, if we wanna make it really sharp, is we need to just, just figure out where the mouth lines up. And the mouth lines up at the second thirds top. And what that means is that if we divide this line, this area here, I mean, between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin into thirds, which is about there, the mouth will go on that top part of the, th uh, of the middle third, the top part of the middle third, I should say. So this is our mouth. And then we bend the jaw right about there. So let's draw that in. We'll make the chin a little bit wider, bend the jaw again. And now we have a general head shape and we can draw in the top of the head by matching about where the circle goes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It also depends on the angle. And then we can draw in a neck. All right, given this new information we have, I want to try drawing a head at a three quarters view for the first time so that you guys can see it, see the process that we're going to go through. We'll draw in this cranial shape. And then we're going to draw in some guidelines. So this is the front of the face. This is the middle of the front of the face. When we draw heads, keep in mind that if we have a front plane of this, for example, right? If I draw in a little box to show you where the front plane would be. So this is the front of the face. We would have a nose here, for example, right? So that you can see it, this center line is not in the center of this rectangle, right? If I draw the rectangle again over here, a little bit darker, if we had it in the middle here, the problem is that as things get further away, they're not gonna be as big as they should be when they're close to us. For example, if I have a painting here, right? We draw a little frame. We're gonna have trees in the foreground. We're gonna have trees in the middle ground. And we're gonna have trees in the background. And we can see that all of these items are different sizes and different levels of detail. When we have something further away, it's gonna get smaller. And we do that same process when we're drawing in the face. So we wanna have the, si the side of the face that is further away from us, we want it to be a little bit smaller. We see less of it. And that's why we're drawing this center line off center. All right, that's the center of the face, but it's off center from the rectangle we're drawing because we're seeing more of this side. Okay, going back to here, we now have our head with a center line. We're gonna draw in a brow line, and I like to draw the brow line in the middle of this circle. It's rounding around the head, but because we're looking at the line from the front view, sorry, by the front view, I mean we're looking at it from an angle where it would be flat. It's at our horizon line, right? We're not really gonna see that bending as much. So this is our brow line. Below that, I wanna draw the bottom of the nose line. And this is where it meets the skull, for example. It meets the front of the face. So the nose would protrude out to here or so, but it would meet here. And then we have another line for the bottom of our chin and another line for our forehead. This divides the head into thirds, and now we want to lay in our proportions for other sectors. So we need to divide this part into thirds. So we're going to do it about there. I'm just guesstimating. It doesn't need to be exact. 
this is gonna be where our mouth goes, right? So if I draw in a little mouth shape there, we know that the mouth is there. That means that our jaw, where it bends, is gonna be right around here. Now this isn't perfect, but it helps us get the picture. I like to start by drawing my chin line in, and I'm making it really, really boxy so it's easy to, to see. Then we're gonna draw in a bit of a jaw shape, line it up with the head, and I like to do it in the middle of this side plane here. You'll see if you use the Loomis method, this is how they do it. They draw in this circle on the side and then cross section it with the brow line and this part where the jaw intersects, All right? And normally the jaw would actually crimp up a little bit. So I'm gonna move it up just like that. Now, when we draw in the opposite side of the face, there's a lot of details we could put in here. There's a chin bone, there's this muscle here that makes the face protrude, there's the chin, sorry, I, I meant the cheekbone, and then the chin. We don't wanna deal with that right now. So I'm literally just gonna draw in a little line here, right, to give us a head shape. That's pretty much all you need if you wanna draw the head shape. You can draw this at any different angle and it'll be really, really easy to get that down. We can draw in a little neck, right, some traps just so we know where the neck is facing here. And then if we wanna get more detailed, this is when I like to start drawing on top, right? So I've got this light head in here. We're gonna draw in a little bit of an ear shape. And then I wanna to try to draw in a face so I can check to see if my head looks correct. So if we wanna check if the face is correctly placing here, all we do is draw in some eye sockets. We'll learn about facial proportions in another video. But generally the eye sockets are going to go about there. We can draw in a bit of a nasal bone. So here we have the brow ridge. It goes back into the skull a bit and then comes out as the nasal bone. And then we could just draw in a nose that would match that shape. So generally around there, make a little bit of a shadow for the nose so we know it's in shadow on the bottom. And then we draw our brows. We can draw in some eyes. Right. And then we can define this outer shape of the face. Chin, make it a little jaw here. Draw in our ear a bit more detailed, right? Maybe a hairline right around there. Match that hairline with where we've got it here. And I can never remember where the hairline's up, but it's about there. Draw in the rest of the head. Very, very rough. Let's color in that hair a little bit so we know it's defined. Get our neck, right? Goes down here. We got some traps or some uh, clavicles here and then the traps that match up with them. Boom. It's as easy as that. So we know that our head looks correct because the face that goes on top looks correct. So this part, this ridge, is very, very important, the brow ridge. Let's go over that quick. We have the forehead, it tends to push out this direction. Let me change my color. We're gonna go red so we can really, really tell what's going on. We have the forehead pushing out in this direction and then the brow ridge brings it back in, right? This is where the, the eye socket starts, around here. And then it goes back out for the cheekbone. Then it goes back in towards the chin. And if you have a really detailed face, the chin will push back out. So we'll have this muscle here, and then the chin will pronounce back out. We go around, go back up, and then we meet back. This is where the whole mask shape comes in. Very, very simple structure of zigzags that allows us to understand where certain planes of the face could be. For example, we know this goes in, and if we have top-down lighting, say there's a sun up here, we know that the shadow is gonna be right here. We would also know that because the cheekbone aligns from where we did our skull, around here, we have a shadow from the cheekbone. We can have a shadow from the bottom of the chin, right? Or the jaw, that casts shadow on top of the neck. We can also have shadow from under the ear, from under the skull, and we can have little indents from where the zygomatic, this cheekbone, meets the frontal. Underneath the nose, we'll have a bit of shadow. Underneath the lips, we'll have a bit of shadow. And then again, underneath the chin. So you can see, knowing the skull and knowing the proportions of the face helps us draw in these shadows as well. Next, we're gonna look into how to simplify the face. So as you can see, in this example, we have a very comic style face versus a very anime style face or a very manga style face. I wanted to point out a key detail that is different between these two. Now, one of them is obviously detail itself. We see a lot more uh, hatching on this one on the left here versus this one on the right. We see a lot more detail in the definition of the nose and the definition of the lips, this cheekbone here. Detail is not necessarily 
absent from manga. Obviously, if you look at certain art styles, they're gonna look very, very detailed despite still being in this realm. The difference that comes with it is that there tends to be less definition. So you won't see the cheekbone, you won't see the protrusion of the chin, things like that. Another thing that's really, really important is what I like to call this wave shape here. I like to call it the wave because on this more westernized look, on this more westernized looking character, what we see is this rigid change where we have this out and then in again and then out again and then it goes to the chin. The difference that we see is that each part is very well defined to match where the skull would be. So the cheekbone here is the zygomatic and that's where the skull is. Here we have this muscle, no idea what it's called, but it's there. I don't know if it's even a muscle, but it's something in the face that causes it to push out, it bulges. We don't see the skull shape as we did before where it's the cheekbone and then it just sinks really far in and then we get the chin. That's what the skull looks like. In this case, we would see a difference of the muscle here and then the chin, right? It's much, much further pushed out. These features are very defined. That's important to note. These features are very defined. We see a cheekbone here and then the chin here and something in the middle. On this side, we see a cheekbone. We do see a chin, but they're not really divided into two different shapes. They're connected as one wave shape. Let's get rid of all that. We have this wave versus this zigzag. Neither one is necessarily wrong. But when you're drawing manga, it's better to stick to this style because it's easier to match the manga look that you're trying to get. It's important to note when we're drawing these characters that the proportions are generally the same. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we won't have longer proportions in certain areas versus shorter proportions. For example, these thirds here, we can see that the nose goes a lot bigger than the rest of the face. And in this case, the forehead is matched up with the nose, is matched up with the chin. It's very even. Neither is wrong, because humans generally will have different proportions. But these proportions are not changing in a sense that you have a gigantic forehead and then like just nose and chin buried in here, right? We had nose, we draw the chin, and then we draw the eye socket, and then there's moi, forehead. <laughs> right? This is not how a person looks, and we know this is not how a person looks. So when we're drawing, although we may change the proportions here, Generally, they fit within this rule of thirds. Another thing that I should note when talking about proportions is that when we draw the head from the side, right, if we're doing a profile view, it's longer than it is wide. And what that means is that when we draw the head from the front, let me center in on this a little bit. When we draw the head from the front, we're gonna see way less head, about two thirds or so, because the head is way longer from this side view. It has a long rectangular shape and then the jaw. This one has a very square shape and then the jaw. Let me draw that in one more time here. This is what it looks like from the side. This is what it looks like from the front. We see that this one is thinner. So now we've gone through multiple parts of the head. We've covered anatomy, proportions, different angles, pretty much everything I wanted to get through. So I'm just gonna go through a few drawings in a time lapse so you can see the process in action from multiple different angles for multiple different character and head types.
That's just about everything you need to know about how to draw heads. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if there's anything you think I missed or more tutorials that you want to see in the future, please leave a comment down below and let me know. This has been Spencer from Start Manga, and I'll see you later.